Hello, Yawning Angel back again with another Amos video and in this video we're going to be looking in greater detail at sprite animation under joystick control. Easy. So in this video we're going to go back and take a look at the game we wrote a few videos back. Uh, there'll be a link up here to that video. Uh, the simple tag game that we did. Now what I'm going to do is look at how we control the sprite animation under joystick control in far greater detail. Yes, we're going deeper into the code this time, so strap yourself in, this one's going to be fun. But before we get going, what you're going to need to do is head to my website, there's a link here, go to my downloads page and download the new source code for this program that we're just about to dive into. Um, basically because I've made some quite fundamental changes to the underlying code and to cover all of them in this video would mean that this video would be excessively long and very boring. Um, so what I'm going to do in this video is just cover the fundamentals but if you download the code you can follow along and see what I have done. Also you're going to need to grab the new ABK file because I've added some additional frames of animation to the main player sprite. So head to my website, grab the files, grab a cup of tea and let's get going. Just quickly before we get going, I wanted to let you know how this video came about because I didn't plan to do this. Um, essentially, it came via a question from one of my subscribers, uh, a viewer called uh, at Kabuto Koji, or Jose as he will be known from here on in, um, messaged me uh, on Twitter and told me he was having some trouble getting a sprite to animate. So effectively, what he had was a sprite on the screen which was stationary. As he moved the joystick, the character moved but did not animate. When he let go of the joystick, the animation would run. Now, in my original version of the game, I didn't have this problem because my animation was running all the time. So, I thought this would be quite a straightforward fix. Just needed to change the order of where the move and the animate was going in. So, what I thought I'd do I took a copy of the, the main program and I've made some changes and my theory was this. Basically, we'd keep uh, the animation defined for channel one for that player character. So that would still be there. But what I would then do in the main routine, the first thing to do would be to turn off the animation for channel one. We'd do that straight away. Because my thought process was that as soon as we move the joystick, we want the animation to come on. So whether we go left, right, up or down, we want to switch that animation on for channel one. We define our movement, we switch the movement on, and we do this for each direction that we want the player to be able to move the character in. So move the joystick, switch on the animation, move the character. As soon as we let go of the joystick, Obviously, the control, in, uh, the control in the program comes back round on the loop and it will turn the animation off. So the theory here being, if you're not moving the joystick, the animation is switched off for channel one. As soon as you go to move the joystick, the animation is switched on. This should work. So let's press F1 and see what happens. So with no joystick being moved, my target character is still moving on the screen, the one I've got to tag, but my player character is stationary. Things are looking good so far. Let's move the joystick right. I should see some animation, but I don't. That sprite is still static on the first frame of animation. There is no animation going on here. The game mechanics are still working fine, but that character is not animating. This is quite frustrating. Um, if you're wondering, I have actually deactivated the check on the timer just so I could show you this example without the game, uh, game finishing. But this theory clearly hasn't worked. Basically, my thought was switch off the animation, switch on the animation as soon as you move the joystick. So if you're holding the joystick down, the animation should be running. This hasn't worked, so a solution still needs to be found. And find a solution I think I have. So now we can dive into the code. Let's get going. Oh, I'm going to need another cup of tea. Right, so uh, here we are. So I've taken a copy of the program that we originally wrote for the game. I've taken a copy of that and I've stripped some stuff out because I'm going to go through 
the changes that I've made, but as I said, not all of them, um, because there's quite a, f a lot of changes in here. So I'm just gonna go through the key changes. So like I said, if you go to my website and if you download the, um, the code for the latest version of this, you'll be good to go. Right, so what's changed in here? So the first thing I suppose I need to make you aware of is that there is a new sprites uh, file. There's a new ABK file because I've added in two extra frames of animation for the main player sprite, just to emphasize the, the sprite movement. Um, in, I suppose the most fundamental changes have come here in the main routine. I've stripped out a lot of stuff from here and put it all into procedures just to make this routine a little bit more streamlined. Um, I've taken some stuff out, moved it out of here. So I've just kind of cleaned it up a bit. Um, so for the timer, there's actually a, a procedure now, handle timer. Um, I've taken some of the, the countdown stuff out of here, moved into procedure, but you'll see that when you look at the code. <clears throat> the most fundamental changes, as you'll probably notice, are here in the joystick control. J left, J right, J up, J down. I've stripped out the code from here because we're going to add in some new code and some new procedures. Effectively, what we're going to be doing is for each directional movement of the joystick, it's gonna have its own procedure which will handle the animation and the movement, okay? So um, I've given these all procedure names. So uh, the first one is called uh, ANSPRTL. You're probably thinking, Yawning Angel, what does that even mean? Uh, basically, I've done it AN animation, uh, sprite, left. Okay, <laughs> that's how I've named my procedure. Uh, for the next one, uh, for the right one, it will be uh, right. For the up one, it will be, but you can't guess what this is, AN SPRT up, and this one will be AN SP. RT down. Okay, <clears throat> let's just tidy that code up a little bit. And then what I'm gonna do, we'll jump to the bottom of the program and we will write each one of these procedures. So each directional movement will have its own procedure for handling the animation and the movement. Okay, so let's get on. Oh, something else I did do. Um, yeah, we got the procedure here for when we run out of time. Like I said, this so this main loop is actually quite streamlined now. There's not a lot going on in here, which is a good thing to do. Uh, programmally, programmally, in programming terms, your main routine should not be cluttered. So this is actually quite streamlined down now, and I really do like this. So this is good. Right, let's get another mouthful of tea and uh, get on with the rest of it. Okay. Mm. Oh, that tea is good. So if you can hear a, a whirring noise in the background, it's my fan because I'm recording this on the hottest day of the year. Here in the UK, September, coming into autumn, it's going to be 31 degrees today. All good. Right. It's not conducive to be wearing a hat in a enclosed retro room. Right, just the chair. Okay, so what I've done here, um, I've chosen a place within the program code uh, just before the sprite collision detection. Uh, procedure, which I think I might have moved that out as well. No, that was already there. Um, so what we're going to do then is, I've already put a comment here, uh, rem uh, handle movement from joystick, uh, one procedure for each movement direction. So this will be um, handle uh, left movement. Is that right? Yeah. Left. Oop. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. No, we'll do that. We'll keep, we'll stick with this. Left move meant from a uh, joystick. Right, and there's my laptop reminding me that I need to record a video today. That's good, because that's what I'm doing. So what we had, this was a procedure called ANSPRTL, okay? So animate sprite left. And then down here, I'm just gonna do my end proc just for good coding practices. So, Doing something slightly different here. I'm gonna use the joy command to detect which way the joystick has been moved. So I'm not using J left, J right, J up, J down here. I'm using joy. So uh, the first thing we're gonna do is uh, rem uh, get the joystick direction. So let's find out which way the joystick's been moved. 
and we're going to have a variable called j, and that's going to equal joy1. Oh, is that a new command, you warning angel? Oh, steady. Bear with me. There we go. Um, yes, it is. So the joy command will return a value depending on which way you've moved the joystick. I don't think I've covered this before. And actually, I think what I better do, if I write a small routine and actually show you this in action, that might be quite beneficial. Let's do that. Uh, okay, a very quick routine to show you how Joy works. Joy! Uh, CLS, we'll clear the screen. Uh, we'll turn the cursor off. We're going to have a do loop. And we're going to have J equal Joy1. So J will have the value of whatever value is returned from the Joy command. So what's the value of the joystick in port 1? What is that movement? Uh, then we're going to do a locate. 10 from a 10, print joystick value. Uh, then we're going to print J, and then we're going to drop a couple of spaces after that, F3 that. So what's happening here? Whatever happens to the joystick, whichever way that is moved, a number, a numeric value is returned to J. That value J will now be printed on the screen. So let's run that. So. If I'm moving the joystick left, the value is 4. If I'm moving it right, the value is 8. If I'm moving it up, the value is 1. And if I'm moving it down, the, vol the value is 2. Look at that. Is that pretty cool or what? So, oh, and if I move it diagonally, we get 9 for up and right. Down and left is 6. Down and right is 10. Up and left is 5. Cool, huh? Look at that. So what we're going to do, we're going to use those values in our main program to determine what's going on with the joystick. Happy days. So, so that's a, a nifty little routine. I'll, I'll save that. Um, let's save that as what we'll call this is uh, joy demo underscore one Amos. Good. We've got that saved. Right, so we know our values. So now this next bit's going to make a lot more sense. So in here, what we're going to say is uh, we're going to get the value of, of the joystick by using the joy command. OK, let's just tap that out a bit. Um, and then what we're going to do, we're actually going to define our animation next. So define our animation frames. Now this might seem a bit counterintuitive because we're doing this in every procedure, but I found that this way works. So we're going to uh, set our animation command. So animation channel one, remember the channel one, uh, and then we're going to set our frames of animation. Now this, I've added more frames in this. So uh, if you check out the last video of this, you'll see how all this builds up. But basically we've got uh, frame one, and our wait time is going to be 6 for this. I've had to tune it. It was 10. I've had to bring it down to 6. And I will explain why later. Uh, 2 comma 6. Then we're going to have 3 comma 6. And then we're going to have uh, 4 comma 6. And then L to loop that. OK. So that is our animation defined. Bear with me because this will make sense. So uh, while j equals 4, <coughs> so we're using a while command now. And we're not using do, OK? So this is quite important. Um, if we're using while, it's a loop effectively. And at the bottom of that, we'll have a wend. So while end, that's what wend stands for, OK? So while our joystick is being pressed in the left direction, what we want to do what we want to do here is rim animate the character. And what we're going to do is turn on animation for channel one. OK, so we've got our joystick. We've set our animation frames. The joystick is now being moved to the left. We're going to switch on our animation. Next, we're going to move the character. OK, and we're just going to use our bog standard move command. Move x. OK, we're using the move x command. Channel 1, comma. And then the movement is 10, comma, minus, oh, minus 1, comma 1. 
This was covered in the previous video. If you're not, not too sure about this, go back and take a look. Then having defined the movement, we're gonna switch the movement on. Oh, what a genius idea. <laughs> Even if I say so myself, look at that. Um, and then we're gonna do all the stuff that we did in the main loop. So, uh, rem, check for sprite collision. And we're gonna call the procedure SPCOL for sprite collision. Uh, we're going to check for clock collision. I I'm not happy with that word. <laughs> and we got a procedure for that called CLKCOL. Uh, we're gonna handle the timer and we've got a procedure called handle timer. Timer, handle timer. Uh, then we're gonna check rem uh, out of time. So this will be, is, is it game over here? And we're gonna call the procedure out of time. Okay. Uh, then, then, boys and girls, rem. Um, so, uh, if joystick no longer pressed, exit this loop. So if the joystick direction has changed, so if they were going left and they've now, the, the player has now brought the joystick back up to the center, so it is no longer going left, we're out of here. Uh, if joy, oops, if joy one, not equal to four, exit, end, end if. Now, we had the wait VBL command. Remember wait vertical blank line? It's when Amos does the animation, <coughs> it waits for the next scan line to come down and it does the animation. Or it, it checks to the screen rather. Finer detail can be found in the manual. We had that in the main loop. We've still got it in the main loop, but I also want it down here because it does make a difference. You do need it in here. And then we've got our, our wend. So, there we have it. To tidy this up. You're probably thinking, Yawning Angel, why aren't you just pressing F3 and let Amos do all this itself? Well, it won't because I haven't defined the other procedures uh, for animation, which I put up in the main loop and it throws a wobbler. <laughs> so, that is it. That is everything we do for this, okay? So, we get the joystick, which way is the joystick going? We then define our animation frames. We then, well, if we're going left, we wanna turn our animation on. We define our movement. I've made a mistake there, boys and girls. I have made a mistake. Yeah, look at that, there's a mistake on that. Look at that. See, it always pays to go back and check your code. That needs to be there. Um, we turn our movement on, then we do the usual game mechanics. We, we check for a sprite collision, we check for the clock um, collision, we handle our timer. Are we out of time? Is this game over? Um, and then if the joystick is no longer pressed to the left, we need to exit this loop. Let's get out of here. And if we come out of this loop, yeah, we'll exit this loop, we'll hit the end procedure then we're gonna go back up to the main loop. Let's go back up to the main loop. Yep. Where we've also got a wait VBL. Uh, we've got our fire button there we can exit. We check out of time there as well. We loop back round. And off we go again. It's all good. Right. Let's give that a try and see what happens. So before I get going uh, with testing this, what I have done here, I've just commented out the calls to these other procedures because I haven't defined them yet. But what I think I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to do the AN Sprite R procedure. So let's do that. And the quickest way to do that, because all these procedures are the same. They are literally the same. Um, the only thing that's different is the value we're checking for for the joystick and obviously telling the character which way to move. So what I'm gonna do is go down to my handle left movement from joystick uh, procedure, ANSPRT underscore L. I'm gonna hit control B for block and I'm gonna highlight all that code. 
Do, 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 do. And we get to the end procedure. I'm going to hit Control S to store it. Then I'm going to come down a couple of lines and hit Control P to paste it. So that's copied and pasted that. 1990s style, everybody. And then I'm going to change this. So the procedure is now procedure A N S P R T R. And I need to check the joystick. So while left was four, right was eight. Okay. Animation frames stay exactly the same. Uh, the move changes. So instead of that value there being a minus one, that becomes a one because it's a positive value. And literally everybody, that is exactly the same. Apart from down here, we need to check what joystick value is being uh, assigned or checked there. So that needs to become an eight because we're checking if the joystick is no longer pressed to the right. Exit this loop. And now I'm going to save that. No errors. And now we're going to run it and let's see what happens. Right, so just before I do run that, I want to turn off my timer because I want to show you the animation running. So what I've done here is in the uh, handle tumor uh, procedure, I've just put an apostrophe here to comment out this line which actually counts down the timer. So we won't have a timer in this. Um, just to give us some more time to play with as it were. Right, let's press F1. So here we go, look at that. Okay, so I've got a character there that is not moving. He is not moving. I moved the joystick to the right, which was Joy 8. And look at that, he's moving, he's moving. Now if I let go of the joystick, he's still moving. And did you spot what I did wrong there or what code I haven't put in? Uh, did you see it? We'll, we'll explain that in a little while. If I go left, he's moving, but now he's moving all the time. We're missing a line of code in our procedure. So let's go back to our animation uh, procedure. So I need to add this into both of these. So in my left uh, and my right uh, procedure, after the while end, I need to put some more code in. And what I need to do here is to turn off the animation as we leave this loop. Yeah, because otherwise he's always going to be animated. So what we've done here, yeah, we come in, we, we check our joystick, we then set our animation frames, and then while that joystick is moved in the direction of our choice, we turn that animation on. We do all our movement, we do all our check-in, and if we stop holding the joystick in the direction of our choice, we come out of this loop and we want to turn the animation off straight away. So what I'm going to do is Control B and just copy that Control S and dump that into this procedure, the right movement as well. So we're doing it for the left and the right. Uh, P, that's right. Uh, two, there's no errors. We'll save that. Right, let's do that again. So our character is stationary. I'm going to move my joystick to the right and there he goes. Look at that. If I let go of the joystick, he stops moving. Check it out, it's working. If I go left, he starts moving, let go of the joystick, ta-da, it's all good. I can't move up and down yet because I've not put that code in. But look at that, no joystick, no animation. Move the joystick, he starts moving. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a win. I'm quite pleased with that. And before anybody says anything about my animation on there, yes, I know it looks like he's swimming, <laughs> but I can't draw and I can't, I can't, I just can't draw. So that's the, the best we can get. But I put the extra frames in just to make it a little bit more obvious that, that he was moving. Right, so what I'm going to do now is uh, add in the code for the next, for the up and down. You don't need to watch me do that. So uh, grab yourself a drink while I do that and we'll catch up uh, when I'm ready. Let's go. Right, so I've been in and just tidied up some of the code. So I've removed the comments from the main loop where I commented out the up and down uh, movements. So I've still got the timer switched off. I've sorted out some spelling mistakes down here, but we've now got, uh, so our procedures are, we've got A N Sprit left. Uh, we've got uh, A N Sprit right. Uh, so we have those okay. And I've done the up. So the animation is defined there. We're checking joysticks, so the J value is one. Don't forget we're using move Y for up and down, and we, we used X for left and right. That's set accordingly. Uh, we've got some comments that are wrong here because I was typing too fast. It's just no lunar pressed. Um, so down, exactly, we're checking for J is two. 
so we're all good there. Turning off the animation. Yeah, we should be we should be happy. We'll save that. I've still got the timer switched off, so we can just see what's going on. Right. No joystick movement, no sprite animation. Move to the right, he's moving. Move to the left, he's moving. Let go of the joystick, he's not moving. Move down, he's moving. Stop the joystick, he's not moving. Move up, he's moving. And he does actually look like he's swimming. He does look like he's swimming, doesn't he? Um, I'm gonna need to sort that out. Anyway, so we've got our left, our right, our up and our down. But, huge big but here, we don't have any diagonal movement anymore. And that's because we haven't defined it. So that, bit of homework for yourselves, you know what those values were um, when we ran that little joy um, procedure earlier, but it showed what those values were. You can actually now put those in. You can now detect for you know, diagonal movements and set that accordingly. You may want to do your own animation frames for that. So let's look at the mechanics of the game. They're working. He just can't move diagonally. But uh, the beauty of this is, as soon as I stop moving the joystick, he stops animating. And then as soon as I start again, off he goes. This was the goal that we were trying to achieve. And I think we've done it. So yeah, happy days. All good. Okay, so I've gone through here and tidied up some of the spelling mistakes and stuff. But I did just want to say, you know, we've got basically a procedure for each direction we move the joystick in. And this is no bad thing because this means we can now define individual elements within each movement piece of code, basically. So I might want the animation to be different from my left to my right animation. So because I'm doing this you know, there's a procedure to handle left, there's a procedure to handle right. In the procedure for right, I could actually change my animation frames if I wanted to. I could come up with something completely different. I could also change the movement rate uh, for when he moves right as opposed to when he moves left. Maybe there are certain actions that only want to happen when a character moves right as opposed to when he moves left. So now I've got these individual procedures, I can now do that if I wanted to. Uh, one other thing I did want to mention is with the timer code put back in, um, there is a, a possibility that because I can't move diagonally at the moment, there's not enough time for the character to actually tag the opponent. It depends how far away it is. If you wanted to change that timer value, please go ahead and do so. But if you put in the diagonal movement, you'll find that you know things go back to normal the way they were and we should be okay and i think i'm gonna yeah i see i've run out of time there but there you go you know apart from that it's all good it's working that the goal for this was to get the animation working under joystick control and i think we have achieved that happy days let's call it a wrap so with this solution in place i do want to say there is another way of doing this and i want to say thank you to another viewer of mine franco walker thank you very much who did offer another solution to this problem but just by using pure aml building up the aml commands uh, to get the animation working under joystick control now i have not covered pure aml in any of my videos yet we've touched on aml and we're using some aml commands but we haven't built up AML strings and statements uh, that can execute. So there is another way of doing it. So if you've watched this and thought, mm, I wouldn't do it that way, I'll just use pure AML. Well, you can do that and it is another solution. I've not covered that in this video. That is one for the future, but I just wanted to mention it. And also just once again to say thank you for Franco for offering that solution. And that is it for this video. Thank you ever so much for watching. I also want to say a huge thank you to, to Jose for asking the question and making this video possible. And also stretching my understanding of this whole animation and sprites thing as well. So it's been a great learning experience. So thank you, Jose. Um, so don't forget, you can go to my website, go to the downloads page, link down here. You can get the source code for this program and the new sprite file as well, the new ABK file for those extra animation frames on the main character sprite. You can find me online at ko-fi.com. I have a Kofi account link up here if you'd like to support my work in any way. Uh, I'm also writing Amos tutorials for the wonderful Amiga Addict magazine, started off in issue 23. We started off looking at Amos, very basic Amos stuff, but yeah, I'm writing tutorials for Amiga Addict. Super happy about that. Um, I'm on uh, the Twitter, the Mastodon, I'm on Blue Sky as well, so there'll be some links for that scrolling up the screen. And of course there's my website, 
Thank you ever so much once again for watching and until the next video, take care of yourselves and whatever you do, keep it retro.